Welcome back everyone. CUBE coverage here at VMworld VMware Explorer. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We get the keynote analysis, the must watch, where we break down the Hawk 10, the whole keynote from VMware, part of Broadcom. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, and Rob Stretche with CUBE Research. Guys, keynote analysis. I got to say, red meat was thrown to the, to the wolves, us. We are going to eat this up. Hawk 10, pulling no punches, Dave. He's out there. We're serious people, we're doing serious business, and we're going to make your life easier. Big time, John. So Chris <laughs> Wolf came out, he kicked things off, he was on for like five minutes, and then he handed it over to Hawk Tan. And I, Hawk Tan was, he was very forceful. First of all, he said, hey, we're almost a year in to the acquisition it's, it's since the close. It was, it's more like, you know, I think, eight or nine months. We've been hearing a lot of feedback from people, so he's listening to the customers. We've heard from you, make, our, make the products work better and make them be more friendly and, and more integrated. He, and, and do the hard work to make things simpler. So then he said, quote, we are serious business people and we are here to help you run your business. You are serious business people too. And then he said, we don't chase shiny new objects. The previous management of this company was enamored of shiny new projects and they chased the cloud. And then he said, you have PTSD from public cloud, the three C's, cost, complexity, and control. Then he brought up the Barclays CIO survey, where it says eight out of 10 CIOs are moving workloads back to on-prem, which Michael Dell has tweeted about. You know, we can talk about that, but the message really was, we're safe, we're simple, we're trusted, we're taking 8,000 SKUs down to four, we're cost effective. Private cloud is the place to be. Forget the public cloud, use that for bursting. He was depositioning the public yeah. cloud, very clear, no ambiguity whatsoever. And we can talk about you know, the validity right, so of what he said. So he basically threw Pat Gelsinger and Ragu under the bus. Yeah, I mean, he did. I mean, he didn't, he he didn't, said he didn't say their names. Previous management. He didn't say their names. Categorically, he didn't say Pat their Gelsinger. names, but he's clearly, I mean, this was, look at. What specifically did he we, mean by that? We have, we have documented VMware and VMworld for what? 15, 11 years now? 15, 15 years. years? Okay, yeah, pre cube even. And every year, VMware would come up with some shiny new toy, it's true. And so, you know, whether it was a v, the, 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 the NSX acquisition, whether it was what they were doing with, with containers, yeah. you know, enhancements to vSAN, even though they were handcuffed by EMC, uh, on and on and on, you know, acquisitions of Carbon Black, VeloCloud, I mean, it was always something, some new toy, and then it was VMware Cloud on AWS, yeah. right? So he, he's right about that, there was always this, but why was that? That was to try to keep VMware relevant and keep them in the conversation. Yeah, and so, keep vSphere from run, not stay, getting going. Yes. Because outside of vSphere, what do they have? Right, and I, so I don't necessarily you know, blame Pat, but, but Talk 10 is a totally different mindset of, he gets look, it. we are going to simplify and drive profitability and we're going to invest in the business, it's the game plan that he uses all look, the time. It was yes. very clear. Well, I mean, yeah. look, I would not crap on VMware chasing the shiny new toy, but I, I will say, post 2015 and beyond, they got bloated. I mean, they just had a lot of, no lot of stuff, and then, then they started groping. Yeah. But before that, I think they did, NSX was not a bad deal. I mean, no, VSAN wasn't bad. Oh, I think what they did, what they talked about, and then Paul Turner came out and talked about, and Chris Wolf came back on later on, and uh, Sanjay Opal, who we'll have on later today, is was on. They all about talked edge. about they talked about edge, and I th think what they were talking about is focus. And I think Hock Tan definitely, you know, when he said, "You guys are so screwed." Uh, <laughs> yeah, he said that. Tell, tell, tell in, that story. In, in reference to cloud, yeah. he's like, you guys are so screwed, you're going down this path, and our TCO is so much better. So there was a theme of TCO, Paul Turner came out and talked about the 42% better TCO on vSphere yeah. than on cloud, and they kept going down, and we're going to talk about Look. that over the next two days as well, but I, I think a lot of where they're going is about innovation and focus within the platform versus going out after those shiny new toys, and I, I yeah. think it makes sense for them. Yeah. I mean, look, Hop Tan has to deliver what everyone wants to hear him say. What are you, what's your plans? And one of the things that's been consistent, Dave, you and I talked about this before, He's been always consistent with what he says and what he does. Yeah. Um, and so for him to lay down the gauntlet like, look, we're just going to have a good business. I think what he's saying is, at the end of the day, if you strip VMware from all the shiny kind of, the, the Frankenstein that built up, it's vSphere. And they've, they're unbandling vSAN, letting people scale out storage and other things are happening and all kinds of things are going on around. What you mean? 
partners, yeah, yes. Partners. I think you're going to start to see, and again, if you apply the serious business to the partner ecosystem, it's not going to be a free-for-all. It's not going to be a thousand flowers bloom, it's going to be a hundred flowers bloom, big flowers. I, I thought that was interesting because there was a big, <laughs> there was a lot of ecosystem discussion, and one of the things that was actually, it, it, it hit me when uh, Paul was out and talking about how many uh, cloud service providers they had, and it, he talked about 300. They used to have 5,000. So that, that to me, again, it's sharpening the arrow, it's, it's being very you know, it's focused. quality partners, That's deeper partners. exactly what they're doing. Let's unpack this cloud depositioning for a I moment. I don't buy that but, whole but thing. Let me, let's, let's go back a little bit, because oh. we were here, and I remember when I snuck into the financial analyst meeting when Pat Gelsinger announced that they're basically going to compete head on with AWS with their own cloud, and we were all like, what, are you that. out of your mind? Good luck with and that, And then, yeah. so, you know, to Jeremy Burton's uh, commentary, don't fight fashion. And he was fighting fashion. In a way he was, in a way he wasn't. He was saying, we're going to go all in on cloud. And so they tried to enable, you know, the clouds to be an accelerant. We're going to show our partners how to do cloud. Total failure. So they had, a, they had a pivot off of that, and then they didn't really, really leaned into cloud with VMware Cloud on AWS, which was highly adopted. Yeah. It was successful in a sense. But so at the time, that, I, I wouldn't say that was the wrong move by Gelsinger, but now, after the PTSD of cloud, yeah. to quote uh, Hawk Tan, I think it's the right play to say, look, we're going to invest in on-prem. We're going to be the alternative to the public cloud because a lot of your data is yeah. there. So, He's basically saying it, private it, cloud is AWS and Azure and, on your and premise. He, he, and he did say, he actually said, you basically, you are getting AWS on-prem. So let's unpack that a little bit. First of all, you talked about the Barclays survey, eight out of 10 CIOs saying they're moving workloads back on-prem, but the public cloud, if you look at the big three cloud vendors, they're growing revenue, they're almost $200 billion combined, they're growing revenue at 20% a year. Okay, so, and if you look at the, the likes of VMware and Cisco and Dell and HPE and IBM and Oracle, I mean, they're growing at single digits. Okay, so clearly the cloud still has greater momentum. The other thing I would add, and I'd love your guys' thoughts on this, is AI tooling, okay, they got, you know, hugging face and they got partnerships with the likes of guys like IBM, but developers and data and data platforms and data tooling, all the governance around that, the stuff we've been talking about in open table forms, they really don't have a data strategy, so that's lacking, but at the end of the day, they've got simple, safe, cost-effective, trusted infrastructure, and I think that's going to resonate with a lot of customers. I mean, look, I don't, first of all, I don't buy the whole narrative of you're screwed with the cloud. I mean, Hawk 10's playing to the crowd because, let's face it, the customers are complaining. No one's happy right now. They're in transition. So VMware's got to get through the knothole of crossing over and cleaning house and getting everyone from the old VMware to the new VMware under Broadcom, which is clearly what's happening. Now, I like the simplicity message, but it kind of reminds me of the lawyer who says, the jury needs to blame somebody, <laughs> right? And Hawk Tan is basically saying, it's the cloud, don't throw it at me. I'm bringing you goodness. So I think, you know, it's a great trick to say, hey, it's the cloud who's screwing you over, not me. I'm making your life great. Yeah. We're serious business. And so their TCO okay, okay. analysis is all head to head with the public cloud. Right, right. Yeah, and, and so I, that's smart. And I mean, we'll look, dig into that tomorrow. I, yeah. I, I, it's great I, messaging, it's a good call. But, but I think to your point on the developer thing, I think there was a big message around Tanzu 10 and how the, the app spaces and how they're trying to simplify the DevOps experience within Tanzu on top of VCF. And I, I think one of the things <laughs> they showed a very complex set of things that goes into it, which was a whole bunch of, like you said, shiny new toys inside <laughs> of there with security, with the distributed firewalls. They had VMs, they had advanced load balancing, they had containers. I did, I, I mean, again, I did like Paul Turner's message that we have a CNCF compliant, you know, Kubernetes platform now. That's goodness. I think that that's great making Kubernetes a first class citizen. I think there's a long way to go with Tanzu to be able to manage more than the VCF environment from a, a, a Kubernetes perspective. But I think they do have a lot of the points to get to that cloud. So are developers in the enterprise going to start saying, okay, we've got infrastructure as code, we're going to start developing apps on top of VMware infrastructure. That, that's no. the question to you guys. No, not right now, but yeah. will they will. I mean, look at the reality is, you've put the keynote aside, 
he's not wrong by saying what he's saying, in my opinion, but think about the complexity involved in doing a private cloud, okay, one. Number two, you get actually better security in the cloud, okay, with Amazon and certain workloads, but no doubt people are going to have private cloud, that's going to be cloud native. I think your point about Kubernetes and CNCF is the right one. Hey, you can have an estate, which was the data center, that's now going to be distributed computing to the cloud. So you're going to have public and on-premises. And that's going to happen. And he's not wrong, but the idea that it's going to be less complex. I mean, IT can't even get stuff right now with what they got going on. So I think you're going to see a little bit of more time to bake out on the enterprise. But if you're a developer, you might spin up a, a GPU cluster and throw it on the rack, but then the, there are other services you can go to. Cerebus just announced an inference service today. You got GPU core weave specialty clouds, you got Amazon, so you can start solving hard problems. At the end of the day, whether you're talking to Matt Garman or Hock Tan or Paul here at VMware, if they're not solving problems, they're toast, because no. agility and speed is what is going to be the test. So if I say, great, I'm all in the private cloud because my developer's going to jump on board and I have, I'm going to move all this data, the time to do all that's going to take a long time relative to now. I can be just meta, I'm in the cloud, use meta, I got Amazon. So I think enterprise development will be slower. Private AI, love that. Low hanging fruit, experimentation, understand it, but you won't see any needle moving yeah. things. Here's, here's what I think, and we've laid this out at the Cube Research, we've tried to do some work on how the application stack is evolving and how intelligent data apps are going to look, uh, what they're going to look like you know, five plus years from now, it's trying to skate to the puck, if you will, and we put forth this idea of Uber for the enterprise where it's a metaphor for you've got a digital representation of your business with people and places and things, and you've got stuff on-prem, you've got stuff in the cloud, you've got stuff on the edge, and it's, and it's all together in this digital enterprise in, in real time or near real time. So the point is, A, the application stack is going to be completely reformed. B is VMware will be a part of that stack because people are going to have to get to data and applications that are running on VMware. So they will be part of that. Now, whether or not they will be an accelerant to that or a leader in that space, I would say no in the sense that they just really don't have a strong data strategy, but they will absolutely be a critical part of the infrastructure and they'll get paid in perpetuity because of that. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. I think that when you look at where they're going, they still have a lot of gaps in there, so are they not going to bring any shiny new toys out uh, to, to like plug some of those gaps? And I think you know, Chris you know, kind of wrapped it up again with the private AI story and how they're going, and we know that they, in that stack, a lot of it's NVIDIA, some of it's their own. They have their you know, agent builder, which was really focused on the, the chatbot building and how you're going to do that. I, I think there's some goodness and some innovation in there. I just think there are gaps there, to your point, about especially in the data stack and where they're going. Uh, you know, again, they look at it as Postgres or MySQL as kind of being the two data stacks that you can use. And yes, Postgres is used a lot in Kubernetes and a lot and they have a lot with DRS and the scheduling, but I think there's still gaps that you need to really solve that cloud already has solved. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? You had, you had said, you kind of whispered to me that, because we were talking about governance, and you said they're relying on NVIDIA for governance. I didn't quite understand that. Can you explain that? Yeah, I think they're relying on some of the software that NVIDIA has put in as part of NIMS as being part of that governance layer inside of that. They're also wrapping that into their private AI and what they're putting on top of that. So I think again, they look at it as, you know, they're kind of, and Chris talks about this a lot, about how you know, they've gone and used it internally and they, they've built these agents internally and talked to how they're doing that and showing people. But even when Chris Wolf has talked about this and we've sat in uh, briefings with him, it's not just about their own software, it's about how they're using ecosystem software as well. And he's been very clear that they don't have the full stack on Yeah, that. and then I'll, I'll add this, I, I, in the hallway track, uh, and I've been talking about Project Monterey now for years. Project Monterey is essentially a VMware and its ecosystem's answer to Nitro, which came out in 2017, which is, I'll simplify it, it's essentially AWS's you know, secret virtualization stack, yep. which gives you security and better performance and greater uh, silicon optionality, and it's how Graviton and Trainium are enabled, but to also run Intel and AMD, and it's, so it's a very powerful uh, component of the AWS infrastructure. 
Google and Microsoft have similar capabilities. Project Nitro was, or I guess is, VMware's answer Monterey. to that. Uh, sorry, Project Monterey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Is VMware's answer to Nitro. I thought it was dead, because I haven't heard anything about it for two years. Sounds like a shiny new toy to me. It's old toy. Well, it's, 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 it's alive. Uh, it's basically running, it's, it's, it's Intel based on Intel FPGAs, which I, I, I would rather see it running on ARM, just for the you know, manufacturability of this. Uh, but it is alive, and there is a roadmap there, yeah. uh, which I've requested, I'm going to see it under NDA. Uh, but that's goodness, but here's why. If, if, if you are going to be the alternative to the public clouds, you have to have that core infrastructure yeah. at the silicon level, yeah. and you have to have developers and data, and my understanding is VMware is restricted from actually having direct contact with Broadcom to build that. So that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Maybe they work with a partner like a Dell or an HPE. I mean, having a firewall there makes sense, because why would, I mean, everyone thought and knew that Dell and VMware, when they were together, were connecting up some proprietary ways to be, have an advantage. But yeah, I mean, I mean Broadcom's not going to just ruin their business to give VMware an example. I mean, VMware's still on double secret probation. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dean Wormer. <laughs> yes. but, but I also agree because I think Sanjay uh, you know, Upal came on and talked about how they're bringing back VeloCloud, which again, I hadn't heard that name in a while, but they've rebranded back to VeloCloud, and how they're doing the software-defined networking and NSX underneath the hood, and they have appliances and yeah. some other stuff that's going on, but Monterey coming out and being tied really tightly to NSX makes a lot of sense for and, them. Yeah, and, well, a, a couple things. I do think they have to broaden it beyond NSX, yeah. so that's part of the story, but you know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned VeloCloud, because that was one of the shiny new toys, yeah. and I will say this, the edge strategy is wide open. It's not like the cloud guys have the edge locked up. If anything, they've got somewhat of a disadvantage because of the centralized nature that they have. So, I mean, VMware can compete at the edge, uh, for, for that, that future I mean, look, state. they have to get their act together first. I mean, first of all, I like what VMware's doing in the sense of, again, all kidding aside, all hyperbole and all kind of like, you know, looking at the current situation, which is really challenging for the company and their customers. We're hearing that across the board from the layoffs we're seeing, from the uh, increase in license and then the VCF simplification. You know, there's going to be carnage, right? I mean, this is just going to be, they got to get through that. But they're not wrong. I mean, secular trend is obviously cloud next gen, which is distributed computing. On-premise data centers are our thing. Yeah, absolutely. They're back because of the, of the Gen AI category. And with GPUs shortages and new hardware coming out, everyone's game got upgraded with, with, the, with the AI wave. And so, yeah, people will be building out. So, yeah, private cloud is viable. When, when did we do our first Wikibon Cube Research post on private cloud? What year was yeah. that? Yeah. Like 2010, 2011? Yeah, tw even before that. Hey, yeah. We got that right, but that's the key. So, yeah. but will they be massive and it's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah, making things simpler is going to take a couple years, you know, in it's my interesting, opinion. John, true private cloud actually took a decade, Rob, to, 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 to bake, right? Because, but it's true now. I mean, to say we basically have AWS on-prem, not true, because you don't have all the tooling and the ecosystem it's basically saying we it. have Outpost. But, yeah. But, 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 but they're better than Outpost. Yeah, no, I know, my point. I was going to say, way my better. My point is the cloud experience, the, the experience of deploying and managing infrastructure with one click is there, finally. And Hybrid long, cloud long is now standard, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. now an operating model, and they got to have a private, and the data around, yeah. around the IP of being the data is proving the fact that people will have stuff on-prem. But I think to your point, I think Paul, Paul Turner also talked about, we didn't have single sign-on across all of our, our all of our pieces, and we now have that. I, th I think again, being focused to your point, John, and being focused down deep into the integration and bringing all the simplicity aspect. I think they are there with the simplicity aspect, and I think, you know, they've really taken that seriously in the last six months since you know the acquisition really closed, and they've really you know, put engineering behind it, which is exactly what Hawk said he was going to do. They're going to focus on the next 10 years of sustainability within the VMware ecosystem. That's a generational you know view. That's a generational view. And you know yeah. what's interesting is, is so many companies, so many technology companies talk about hybrid. Hawk is not talking about hybrid. He's talking about private. Yeah. And I, and, and, but to your point, 90% uh, of the customers are quote unquote hybrid, however you don't want to define hybrid. If you define hybrid as they got some cloud, public cloud, and they got some on-prem, that's hybrid. It's not what Chuck Hollis put forth you know, back in 2009 you know, to combat the NIST definition of public cloud, of cloud, which was all you know, somewhere out there in the wild. 
Um, so you're not like running you know, distributed workloads yet anyway. But I will say this, and a lot of analysts you know have said, oh, I've been saying hybrid for years and now everybody's jumping on board. Well hang on, because the industry took forever to get you know, true private cloud right. Now that it's here, it's really interesting to me that Hock Tan's not talking about hybrid. He's not talking about our super cloud vision. He's talking about yeah, private cloud. Yeah, because that's what he's selling. Yeah, of course. Hey, that's what he's yeah. selling. But he's just I mean, skewing back, public cloud of course. and hybrid cloud. That's not his messaging. He's it's, at the Broadcom on, VMware conference. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, he's just pointing going that out. To, just to, helping the audience understand. Yeah, this is what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> yeah. And buyer beware, if you're going to go to the cloud, I'm yeah. warning you, that's bad. Yeah, the PTSD and aspect of Matt it. Garmin, yeah. my exclusive interview him, <laughs> he won't even talk on premise. If you say come to the cloud, if you say top developers, you go to your top developers and say, hey, let's let's get off the cloud and come back on prem. They'd be like, see ya. So, but right? well, well, wins. Well, no, there's use cases where you can put resources. The question's going to come down to power. Where's that? Where's it located? So there's so many in workload, issues. I mean, if you're running twenty four by seven by three sixty five, it ain't a layup. I'm just saying. Developers like the cloud. They, that's where they hey, see all the cool stuff happening. Think about the compliance, just think about the knot hole that, it's like going to the airport. You get flagged at security, you got to go through TSA, and this is IT. <laughs> Sustainability, the yeah. data modeling, developer pipelining, not just stacking up the gear. I mean, it's not trivial. Um, so I think hybrid is the formula, but they're not wrong. Private cloud needs to be there. So, you know, What's going to happen to those VMware cloud on AWS customers? Are they going to say, all right, I'm going to go back on prem, or are they going to say, okay, it's now finally the, our, our, the prediction of AWS is going to suck over those workloads. What's going to happen? Do you think they're going to go back on prem, or are they going to modernize in the uh, public cloud? I, I, I or think a combination? They, I think they may shift to one of the other clouds because of the license portability that they talked about as well, and was actually a, a bigger theme than I thought it was going to be today. Uh, when they were talking about that and hey, maybe they go to AVS or they go to one of these other, go to Google, you know, you know VMware service, and I, I think there's other places for them to go. I think AWS, they'll come around and they'll have a service there as well, but I think, again, part of it becomes ease of use and where is its simplicity, and also to your point, where do I get all of those other services that I need? Yeah. And can I go to that cloud? So I, I actually think, you know, benefit Azure, benefit Google, benefit cloud service providers who have these services that built around. And professional services. I mean, the cloud has built up a really strong you know, a cadre of professional services and GSIs. You're not hearing them here. I think that'll have to evolve over some time. Uh, but that's, that's, they go to the Reddit threads and you, people are just pissed off about the poor levels of service that they're getting, that they're paying for. So that has to, that's, there's some gaps there to fill. So developers, the data stack is, is lacking in my opinion. Yeah. Um, edge is wide open and professional services, you know, maybe that comes through partnerships with folks like Dell, they'll finally get that together. You know, yeah. the VxRail stuff is still kind of funky and when you, as, yeah. as, an, as an example of I where some my, of it is just I noticed Michael work. Dell just tweeted an hour ago, not surprising, quoting the graph. Right. On, on Barclays. On Barclays yeah. planning repatriation. But again, the, your point about growth, this is, we always talk about this, not like a workload, it's, a, it's net new growth. So cloud's not declining, on-prem is growing back. Well again, so cloud, it's like, the public cloud's growing at 20% a year, on-prem's gro growing at you know, four, six percent a year at best. I, I, so, think, I think one of the interesting things that he did do was, he, uh, Hawk and um, Paul and a couple others, kind of, they, they uh, embraced cloud where they wanted to, and one of the places they embraced cloud, and this goes back to your Matt Garman discussions and things like that, was he goes, the, the top eight clouds are all using Ethernet. And he took a direct shot, I think that's a direct shot at NVIDIA, yeah. I mean, no, no and, doubt. And, I mean, and InfiniBand. Yeah, InfiniBand, yeah. and saying, hey, we're good, you know, every, everybody, it's 30% better, and you know, from a performance perspective, and all of, it's more resilient. I, I, again, I always learned a long time ago, you don't bet against Ethernet. No, Ethernet, is, Ethernet's done, deal, it's happening. Yeah. There's no doubt about deal, it, speeds no doubt. are getting it yeah. done. Infiniband. That's not to say that's not to say InfiniBand's dead. It's no, not. it's no. going to coexist for use cases, yeah, narrow absolutely. use cases, high speed connection to chips and devices. So, like, look at that's done. Yeah. Bottom line, guys, let's wrap this up. So, keynote analysis, final thoughts, Dave. Well, again, Hawk Tan was unambiguous about the strategy. 
Uh, and I think we've been saying this all along. This is, as you said, Rob, this is exactly what he said he's going to do. We're going to narrow the focus. We're going to invest in R&D. And we're going we're gonna, to, he didn't say this, and they, they will debate this. We're going to raise prices. They say they're not really doing that. I think the overall TCO argument is a good one. I, I think there's too. a lot of cases where the TCO is going to be more advantageous if you're all in on VCF. And so, I think that's the very clear message. It's all about private cloud. And, uh, you know, like you said, certain use cases for public cloud, like bursting. Yes. You know? uh, but, you know, the, the message was clear. Yeah, and I think getting closer to the edge and getting closer to the customers with AI makes total sense. I think leaning into where there's a lot of green field or for them to go with AI makes total sense as well. And I think edge is definitely uh, a big message coming out of today and I, I think that's a place they could win. I think um, it's very clear, I agree with your point about unambiguous, they're very focused on simplicity. It reminds me of that song from Sheryl Crow, this ain't no country club, yeah. this ain't no disco. <laughs> I mean, VMware has been, <laughs> customers have been sitting on the beach, yeah. sitting back, running, running the show, and the fact of the matter is, Hawk Tan's like, look it, we're going to make a business out of this, and you're still going to run your apps, because they can't really switch. Now there are use cases where VMware customers won't fit for VCF. Like I've always said, they will be gone, but I think it's very clear, this ain't no country club. We're going to mean business, and they have to take a look at their infrastructure and make a decision. Yeah. Do they, look at, and then make a choice. Cost of ownership, switching costs, or I'm going to give you improvements and we're going to engineer better stuff, hyper-focused. I think that's a good play. And they just got to get through the shock of the, their PSD, well, SD, and, and which is, oh my God, my license is going up, I didn't budget for it. So I think short term, got to get through that rough water and sell the customers, like look it, you're going to end up being better, but it's going to be painful. And you know that uh, saying, I'm just saying, you know the saying, country club. You know the saying, the, the grass is always greener, yeah. and if you're going to yeah. go to Nutanix, guess what's going to happen? They're going to raise prices on you once they get you in it, there, no, no doubt. You go to OpenShift, well, you're going to have to do a lot of your own heavy lifting. I mean, there are managed services there. Gen AI. So I think the cloud actually benefits from some of the, oh, yeah, the migration. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, if you got core mission critical workloads running on VMware, don't mess with them because yeah. it's going to screw up your business to migrate. You're going to have to freeze the yeah. migration is a is a bad thing. He reminds so me of Andy Jassy. He costs. reminds me of Andy Jassy. No one's going to build a data center. Screw the cloud. So uh, Hawk 10 has to say that, but at the end of the day, Dave, Gen AI and Rob is forcing everyone to look at their estates and assess what's going on because there's a lot of stuff that's got to be cleaned up. If you want to go this next level, okay, this is not for the faint of heart. You got to look at yourself, look at your infrastructure, well, and just, he'll you say, know. Legacy apps and legacy infrastructure never die, you got to kill them. So, and that's a hard thing to <laughs> well, do. I mean, okay, <laughs> guys, great analysis. We've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at VMware Explorer 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante and Rob Stretchy from the growing CUBE research team. Guys, great job, by the way, on all the research putting Thank out. You. CUBE research is really pumping out great original research, great all content, yeah. all free, no hypes, no hot takes, just hot analysis. Okay, we'll be back with more coverage after this short break.